These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Um, do you remember anything about kinetic energy? Do you remember what the formula is for kinetic energy or what that One measures? Half yeah, that's right. Well, what does the M stand for? The mass. That's right. And the V? Velocity. That's right. Uh, now, we know that uh, velocity is a vector, so it has both a magnitude and a direction. However, the kinetic energy really only depends on the magnitude of the velocity. It only depends on your speed, basically. You can kind of see that because we might represent the direction of the velocity with a sign. But it doesn't matter whether we put in a positive v or a negative v because we're going to be squaring the v here. Maybe just to emphasize that, though, I'm going to put a dot here. Uh, so the dot is just a symbol that I made up to emphasize when a variable just stands for a magnitude. So this just stands for the magnitude of v, which means that kinetic energy only depends on your speed. So if you speed up, you would have more kinetic energy. And if you slow down, you would have less kinetic energy. But if you just change your direction, that doesn't change the kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is a type of energy. Do you remember what the units are for energy? Joules. Good that you remember that. I think it's really important to try to memorize each unit as it comes up in the class. Well, the unit for kinetic energy is joules, and it's good that you remember that. Well, what we'd like to talk about is how can we change the kinetic energy of an object? What can we do to change its kinetic energy? Um, and the way you change the kinetic energy of an object is by doing work on an object. We could use capital W for work. Maybe we'll use lowercase w for weight, so we don't confuse that with capital W for work. Well, what determines how much you're going to change the kinetic energy of an object? Well, if you're pushing with a big force, that would tend to change the kinetic energy more. Um, but also, something else that matters is, say, how long you're pushing. If you only push for a short period, you wouldn't change the kinetic energy very much. And if you push for a long period, you would change it for more. So it might, make sense, it might seem like we should put time in here. But actually, it turns out that the best way to think about how long you're pushing here is to focus on what distance you're pushing over. Or what displacement. This would be the symbol for displacement. Because if you're pushing over a long, a long displacement, that's like pushing for a long time. And if you're pushing over a short displacement, that's just like pushing for a short time. So the, the longer the displacement over which you're pushing, it should stand to reason that the more the kinetic energy is going to change. So this is a kind of formula that tells us what our intuition for work is supposed to be. It says that the work tells you the change in the kinetic energy. If you add up all the work by all the forces on the object, that would tell you how much the kinetic energy of the object is going to change. Well, it makes sense that the harder you push, the more that will change the kinetic energy. And the longer the distance over which you push, the more that will change the kinetic energy. Uh, but there, there's one more thing. Some types of forces change an object's speed, but some types of forces change an object's direction. And we only want to focus on the portion of the force that's changing the speed, not the direction. For example, suppose that we had this velocity. Well, this is going to change the object's speed. In fact, is it going to speed the object up or slow it down? Speed it up. Yeah, speed it up. So it makes sense that this would be included as part of the work. Mm -hmm. Notice that even though this is in what we might call the negative direction, it's still speeding the object up. Because what matters is that here the force is parallel to the velocity, not that it's in what we might think of as the negative direction. Well, do you think this would speed the object up or slow it down or change its direction? Slow it down. Yeah. Here, they're anti-parallel, so this would tend to slow us down.
Well, here I have a force that's perpendicular to the velocity. Well, it kind of makes sense that this can't be speeding us up or slowing us down, because it's neither parallel nor anti-parallel to the velocity. This is a force, then, that would change our direction. So even though it's changing the direction, it doesn't slow it down at all? That's right. As long as the force is perpendicular to the velocity, it, it can't slow it down at all. That's right. I thought when things change direction, they slow down. No. Uh, let's see, there might be some contexts where that's true, but it doesn't have to be true. After all, you can just imagine, um, think about, uh, say, a car driving around a racetrack at 50 miles per hour. There's nothing that says that it has to go from 50 to 40 to 30. It could just go at a constant speed of 30 miles per hour. So there might be some contexts where, say, I don't know, friction is slowing you down. There might be some context you're thinking of where you were slowing down. But in general, there's nothing uh, paradoxical about going at constant speed in a circle, say. Okay. All right, so if the force is purely perpendicular to the velocity, it would just be changing your direction. Well, which of these would be doing work? Would this be doing work? Uh, which yeah. of these would change the kinetic energy? Well, would this change the kinetic energy? Because it would get faster. That's right. And would this change the kinetic energy? Yes. How about this? No. No, because it's only changing our direction which we talked about doesn't have any influence on the right. kinetic energy. The kinetic energy only depends on the magnitude of the velocity, or your speed. All right, so when we're figuring out work, we have to be careful to throw out the forces that are perpendicular to the velocity. They're not going to do any work. We only want to focus on forces that are parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity. In fact, we can uh, go into more detail here. Is this going to, uh, well, we know this is going to speed us up. So is it going to increase or decrease the kinetic energy? Increase. Increase the kinetic energy. So should we consider this positive work or negative work? Positive. Because here, delta K will be positive. So the work should be positive. What we're seeing here is, again, that the work tells us how much the kinetic energy is changing. Well, if you're speeding something up, you're increasing the kinetic energy, so the work should be positive. And when you're ready, how about here, when we're slowing down, would this work be positive, negative, or zero? Negative. Because here, delta K would be negative, so the work would be negative. And how about here, would the work be positive, negative, or zero? Zero. Because it's not changing the kinetic energy at all. Well, this is something that's important to emphasize because one of the hardest things, I think, in the class for students is getting the signs right. That can be one of the peskiest things about the problem. Well, here's how we can figure out the sign. If the force is speeding us up, it should be doing positive work. And if the force is slowing us down, it should be doing negative work. And if it's, not, if it's only changing our direction, there's zero work. So, in fact, we're not going to try to use this formula to get the sign of the work. We can just get that from our common sense now. So I'll put in some dots here to show that in this formula, we're just going to be working with magnitudes. This will tell us what the magnitude of the work is, how much the kinetic energy has changed in magnitude. And then we can just say, well, if, if the force is speeding us up, we know that's a positive work, and we can put a plus sign in front. Or if we're slowing down, we know that's negative work. Another way to put it is, when the force is in the direction of motion, it's doing positive work. And when the force is opposing your motion, it's doing negative work. <coughs> Well, something that should be worrying us here is what if the force is neither parallel, anti-parallel, nor perpendicular? A lot of forces could be, say, kind of uh, at an angle to the velocity. Well, we can use the trick that we've seen so many times in the course now, which is breaking things into components. But I'm not going to break this into x and y components. I'm going to break this into a component that's parallel to the velocity and a component that's perpendicular to the velocity. We can use these symbols for this. So I'm not going to call these x and y, because what matters here is not the x and y axes. What matters is which component is parallel to the velocity and which component is perpendicular to the velocity. Now, which of these components here is going to be doing work, the parallel component or the perpendicular component? The parallel component. So 
we have to go back and fix our formula. We're not supposed to put in the entire force when we're calculating the work. We should only put in the component of the force that is parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity. Only the component of the force that's parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity can do work. I don't know if your instructor ever used this symbol in lecture, but they use this sometimes in the, in the textbooks. This is a good symbol here to show that we only want the component of the force that's parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity. So in your notes, you need to have, what, what does this mean? It's the component of the force that's parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity. Uh, all right. This component is changing our direction, so it's not going to do any work. 